last bit is rebuilding a world economy now we have seen that there were crisis economic crisis after the first world war right so now how the different countries they came up they had the solutions to get the economy on the same front before the war okay to make the economy stronger that is what we are going to see today the post war era we have seen the pre era or inter war now post after the war what happened we will see that i hope you have the history textbook with you and if you happen i'll let find okay so the global economic stability was this job once again with the advent of world war 2 so now this is first world war has taken place somehow they have managed now the second world war was experienced by the world and after that again they started building the economy now the us emerged a strong political economical and military power during this war now this war second world war was fought only on land or like how so now additionally what happened now us became strong politically economically and military wise additionally the soviet union which is which was called as russia okay a prior russia which was uh, a combination of countries then it sp split up okay so the soviet union also rose in dominance so not only america but even russia was quite strong uh, politically economically economically and on the military front okay the post war economy targeted two goals one is economic stability and other is employment they were giving up employment so that they can earn more and that is how they can achieve economic stability okay we studied about the mass production system introduced by henry ford do you think it would be of use if the producer goods were not consumed accordingly only production is done but it is not in demand it is not been utilized it has not been consumed so what difference will it make okay yeah so that is what you need to tell like i'll be asking or you can put it in the chat box i can see it later okay thus mass production would not work in the absence of mass consumption so demand should be there otherwise production does not have a meaning that is just kept in the godowns to rot so whether it is perishable or whether it is whether it is not but after some time all the goods get damaged okay when would we we be in a position to consume or purchase goods comfortably when you have enough money so well of course only we had stable jobs that ensured a steady income so when we'll have money and we have stable jobs and what that us and would that be possible if we relied on a job market that was already what uh, volatile and dynamic what is volatile changing yes okay. so if you change the job and if you have like ups and downs in the job you don't have steady income so stable and steady income can be achieved by the stable uh, stable and steady job to address the issue the government must intervene and anchor these variables to work on these variables okay intervene what do you mean by intervene participate take interest in participate is intervene which also meant the government must control the flow of goods capital and labor so we have seen the flows that was of capital labor and trade so it is the same if there is a flow then only we can have incomes as well uh, jobs and ultimately income now the britain wood system a conference was held at britain woods in usa to work out how to preserve economic stability so britain wood is a place in usa where there was a meeting held to discuss how to preserve the economic uh, stability how to maintain okay. 
another international monetary fund was established to deal with the surpluses and deficits of all the participating nations those who, nations who were participant of this um britain uh, wars so what was done was uh, international monetary fund monetary means related to money okay. so internationally a fund was established we can say to uh, to have a discussion or to make to take decisions on if they have surplus what they will do or if they have deficit what they will do. okay these were only for the participating nations the world bank and the international bank was reconstruction and development financed the reconstruction work required during the post war period so the world bank and international bank was involved in the development and reconstruction of finance so that is what is to attain the stability of the economy after the second world war okay this economic system worked primarily on fixed exchange rates there was a positive growth in the world trade employment and the income became the written word um return over system was introduced okay so what pri primarily means and on the basic uh, what they kept they kept the fixed rate of interest okay but this seemed to be very positive this came out to be as a positive uh, so, uh, solution to bring the economic stability so this was known as like uh, that, this was a milestone and the wrong developing of economy in different countries so developing countries heavily invested in capital technology and industries in order to catch up with the developed countries now those who were already developed who were developed the russian and american country right america and russia was already developed countries so those who were in process of development what they did they started investing more and more and capital technology and industries they were uh, building industries out of their country okay to catch up with the developed countries the crumbling economies as the war came to an end so did colonization with the second world war okay you are apt like to know when did second world war take place year in which it started it ended second world war it was from between 1939 to 1945 okay so after 1945 the colonization in different countries like the british rule for india it nearly started ending okay but years of their rules had left the colonies rather crippled crippled what do you mean by crippled here with this context okay i don't want the dictionary meaning broken yes like torn apart yes ruined correct demolished yes damaged okay yes so the colonial rules have exploited the countries from all the sides from money resources and everything right so the economy there was crippled we can say although the developing countries were free from the colonial rule they were in poverty stricken and lack enough resources as i said that they were exploited with resources also so but they, they were left with very less resources as well as no money as such in their hands okay. the pretty ambiton our system could focus their attention towards these countries as the larger economies like us and japan people themselves and became self sufficient so they themselves became self sufficient us and japan whereas now the um, breton wood system they were working on the developing countries they were helping these countries to be self sufficient okay so the developing countries came together to form the group of 77 to demand new international economic order so here both the questions can come one is nico full form of it nio sorry nio full form of it and uh, what do you understand by group of 
group 77 or g77 it is also called as okay so this is important we will be reading in the textbook also even you can read it at home if possible and mark it for one mark questions okay this order would not allow would not only allow them to retain their hold over their natural resources but also gain access to global markets and fairer prices so the developing countries how what they did they did not give the uh, ownership of natural resources they kept it with them and they also had a very good access with the global world they can farm like they can produce goods using the uh, the natural resources or the natural resources they can extract from mining and all and they can process it and they can uh, they, the products were open to the global market with fairer price with fairer profit we can say in this manner the developing economies could secure a pathway towards fast economic growth so this is how everyone were at peace trying to be at peace okay in the 1960s all was not well with the us then economy began to collapse as the dollar lost its place as the world's principal currency so this also you need to remember okay what happened with usa and uh, how uh, uh, sorry when consequently so what were the consequences so what was the effect of this consequently the system of fixed exchange rates came to an end instead floating exchange rates came to be in ex into existence that is a system where the rate is based on the demand and supply okay so now clearly what it was it was a stable exchange rate right so oh, fine Uh, you like whether the product is in demand or not, but we will uh, purchase it at this particular price, fixed exchange rate. Okay. But now, because the dollar reduced, because the products were not in demand, so what they did is that they started with floating exchange rates. That means, if the demand is more, you can increase the price. You can supply more, and you can increase the price. Okay, without any government interference. Okay, it will be between the traders itself, right? A decade later, the international financial system followed suit. Debt crisis, in a lower incomes, and rising poverty hit the already striking, already stricken developing countries. When the Soviet Union also lost its path, economy like China attracted foreign investors. they were able to produce goods here at lower cost and by giving lower labor wages so this is the last decade we have seen about china right yes chinese anything any article or any um, product of china we get it at lower cost because the wages and the because of the population everyone wants employment and that is where they can get uh, with labor at lower wages okay so they can afford to sell it at lower uh, cost also ever since economies like india china and brazil have undergone a rapid economic transformation so this is how this is where they started changing their economy so now you need to read from the beginning of page number 98 till the end of the page 101 yeah now we building a world economy okay yeah the second world war broke out a mere two decades after the end of the first world war it was fought between the axis powers mainly nazi germany japan and italy and the allied britain france the soviet union and the us now we had allied power and the central power in first world war now in second world war you need to understand what was the axis power and the allies power okay the allied power remains the same you need to remember the axis power okay so this me come for again one mark okay so mark it there if you have the textbook okay, or note it down somewhere yes continue here yeah. 
it was a war waged for 6 years on many fronts in many places overhead also in the air once again death and destruction was enormous at least 60 million people or about 3% of the world's 39 population are believed to have been killed directly or indirectly as a result of the war millions more were injured unlike in earlier wars most of these deaths took place outside the battlefields many more civilians than soldiers died from war related causes vast parts of europe and asia were devastated and several cities were destroyed by aerial bombardment or aerial aerial bombardment aerial bombardment or relentless uh, artillery attacks hmm? the war caused an immense amount of economic devastation and social disruption reconstruction promised to be long and difficult two crucial influences shaped post war reconstruction the first was the us emergence as the dominant economic political and the military power in the western world the second was the dominance of the soviet union it had been it had made huge sacrifices to defeat nazi germany and transform itself from a backward agricultural country into a world power during the very years when the capitalist world was trapped in the great depression Oh. post war settlements and breton woods uh, institutions economics and politicians drew two key lessons from interwar economic experiences first an industrial society based on mass production cannot be sustained without mass consumption but to ensure mass consumption there was a need for high and stable incomes incomes could not be stable if employment was unstable the stable income also required steady full employment uh, but uh, markets alone are not guarantee full employment therefore governments would have to step in minimize uh, step in would have to step in to minimize fluctu- uh, fluctuations of price output and employment economic stability could be ensured only through the in, in, uh, intervention of the government the second lesson related to the to a country's economic links with the outside world the goal of full employment could only be achieved if government had power to control flows of goods capital and labor thus in brief the main aim of the post war international economic system was to preserve economic stability and full employment in the industrial world its framework was agreed upon at the united nations monetary uh, monetary and financial conference held in july 1944 at breton woods in new uh, hams ham okay, okay hamshire okay continue okay. the breton woods Co- uh, conference established the international monetary fund imf to deal with external surpluses and defects of its member nations just a minute here so you need to uh, mark this for one mark okay what is imf the full form maybe okay what was established in britain august conference that can be another question on the same okay as well as this the international bank of reconstruction and development okay popularly known as um, world bank so this also sentence is important from one mark uh, question point of view so mark it and then you can uh, start uh, reading the international bank of for reconstruction and development popularly uh, popularly known as world bank was set up to finance post war reconstruction the imf and the world bank are referred to as the breton woods institutions or sometimes the breton woods twins This post-war international economic system is often uh, is also often described as Bretton Woods system. Okay, thank you, dear. So even this part, the IMF, like the entire paragraph, is important, but there can be small questions of one mark. Okay, so you can mark it totally, and how the questions may form, you can just have an idea about it. Okay. If you like our videos, do share them and subscribe to our channel.
If you want awesome quizzes, write to us. Keep watching and keep learning with Walnut.